Hey guys, this video is going to go over your study guide for Tuesday. We're looking at problems 8 through 14, 23, and 24. So let's jump right in with problem number 8. Lynn ran three and a half miles on Monday. On Wednesday, she ran one and one third times as far as she ran on Monday. Which best describes how far Lynn ran on Wednesday? So the first thing I notice is that I'm not actually going to solve this problem. That's going to help me out. No need to solve a problem that I don't need to solve. Work smarter, not harder. I'm going to be looking to see which of these choices best describes what's going on in the problem. So what is going on in the problem? Lynn is going to run. She's running on Monday and she's running even further on Wednesday. How much further? One and one third times as far. When I see that word times there, that tells me that this is a multiplication problem. So on Monday, Lynn ran one and, excuse me, three and one half miles. On Tuesday, or Wednesday, she's going to run one and one third times as many miles. So I'm going to take what she did on Monday and I'm going to multiply it by one and one third. And then I'm going to get an answer. I'm not actually going to solve this problem. Instead, I'm going to think about the answer and how it relates to what she did on Monday. I'm going to look here at this number, one and one third, and I'm going to ask myself, when I multiply a number by one and one third, by a mixed number, is my value going to increase, is it going to decrease, or is it going to stay the same? Well, I know it's not going to stay the same because the only time a value stays the same is when we multiply it by one, and this is one and one third, so it's not going to be equal to. So now I have to ask myself, is the value of three and one half going to increase or is it going to decrease? Remember in class when we talked about the growing and shrinking potions, what did we say about mixed numbers? Mixed numbers are greater than one. Any number greater than one, when multiplied, is going to cause that number to get bigger. It's going to cause it to increase in value. So because one and one third is greater than one, we're going to increase the value of three and one half. So now we're going to look up here at the answer choices and see which choice says that. The first choice says Lynn ran less than one and one third miles. That would mean that we decrease the value. And that is not happening. We already know that Lynn ran farther than one and one third because it's one and one third times as far. So A is not the correct answer. B says Lynn ran exactly one and one third miles. Again, we know that's not correct because it's one and one third times as far. C said Lynn ran three and one half miles. Again, we know that's not correct because we already said the only way to get it equal to is if we say times one. So that leaves answer choice D. Lynn ran more than three and one half miles. And that's exactly what we said. When we multiplied three and one half by a mixed number, we increased it value. So the answer is D. All right, let's look at number nine. Number nine says, which explains why one third divided by four equals one twelfth. So again, I'm not solving the problem, but I'm explaining. So let's look at our answer choices. When one-third is divided into 12 equal parts, wait a minute, this isn't one-third divided into 12 equal parts, this is one-third divided into four equal parts. So right away, I know that A is not correct, and I can cross that one out. Let's go to B. When four is divided into one-third equal parts, stop again. I don't start with four, I start with one-third. So I can cross out B, that's not correct. Let's look at C. When one-third is divided into four equal parts, one-third divided into four equal parts, the size of each part is one-twelfth. The size of each part is one-twelfth. That seems like it's correct, but let's make sure by looking at problem, or the last answer. When one-twelfth is divided into four equal parts, stop. I'm not dividing one-twelfth, I'm dividing one-third. So that's not the correct answer. So through process of elimination, we see that C is the correct answer. Problem number 10. A group of students used an inch ruler to measure objects in their desks. They organized the data on a line plot. If you place all the objects together end to end, what would be the total length of all the objects? Remember, a line plot shows us the different data points that we take where each x represents one object. 
So in this case, each x represents an object that was measured. Our fraction represents the length of the object in inches. We're trying to figure out what the total length of all the objects would be. So this is an addition problem. I'm going to be adding all of these fractions based on how many x's I see. All right, so let's start with 1 eighth. There is 1 x over 1 eighth. So I'm going to add 1 eighth. Let's go to 2 eighths. There are 3 x's over 2 eighths. So that's 2 eighths plus 2 eighths plus 2 eighths. 2 eighths plus 2 eighths plus 2 eighths. Well, I know that that is 2, 4, 6. 6 eighths. So I'm going to add 6 eighths to my problem. Again, I'm trying to find the total amount. 1 eighth plus 6 eighths equals 7 eighths. Let's keep going. There is 1 x over 3 eighths. So I'm going to add 3 eighths to my 7 eighths. 7 plus 3 equals 10. That is 10 eighths. Now that is an improper fraction. So I'm going to turn it into a mixed number. 8 can go into 10 one time with 2 eighths left over. Let's keep adding. Now I see 4 eighths plus 4 eighths. 2 4 eighths, 2 x's over the 4 eighths spot. So that's 4 eighths plus 4 eighths, which equals 8 eighths or 1 whole. So I'm going to add 1 whole to my 1 and 2 eighths. That gives me 2 and 2 eighths. I'm running out of room, so I'm going to rewrite that over here. 2 and 2 eighths. There are no 5 eighths. Let's go to 6 eighths. There are 2 x's over 6 eighths. So that's 6 eighths plus 6 eighths, which equals 12 eighths. That's an improper fraction, so we're going to turn it into a mixed number. 8 can go into 12 one time with 4 eighths left over. So we're going to add 1 and 4 eighths. 2 plus 1 is 3. 2 eighths plus 4 eighths is 6 eighths. All right, let's keep going. I don't have any 7 eighths, so the last thing I'm going to add is 8 eighths. I know that 8 eighths is the same thing as 1 whole, and there's only 1 x. So I'm going to add 1 to this. 3 plus 1 equals 4, and my 6 eighths. So I have 4 and 6 eighths. When I look down here, I see that that is not an answer choice. There is no 4 and 6 eighths. But wait a minute. I can simplify. Remember, we can make our t-charts for 6 and 8 to figure out how to simplify. 1 times 6 is 6, and 2 times 3 is 6. 1 times 8 is 8, 2 times 4 is 8. So my greatest common factor is 2. So I can take that greatest common factor and divide my numerator and my denominator by 2 to get an equivalent fraction. So my simplified answer is 4 and 3 fourths. And I see that 4 and 3 fourths is answer choice C. So C is the correct answer for number 10. Next, let's look at problem number 11. Find the sum. Write your answer in the blank. 3 fourths plus 3 and 1 half plus 6 and 1 third. So I've rewritten it over here so I have a little bit more space to work with. Now, I'm not going to add three fractions together. That's too many. So I'm going to start with the first two, find my sum, and then add the last one. So let's do 3 fourths plus 3 and 1 half. And I'm just going to add that zero up there because I don't have any holes. All right? Using our wrap, we can say, sitting in math class, working with fractions. Teacher says, add, teacher says, subtraction. I think about my steps, one through six, then I know I can solve this problem real quick. Number one, estimate. It's time to round zero half hole, and the answer can be found. So going back up here, we can estimate three-fourths is close to one hole. Three and one-half we can keep as 3 and 1 half. And 6 and 1 third, we can round to just 6. So we add our holes. 3 plus 6 is 9, plus 1 is 10, 
and that one half. So our answer should be somewhere around 10 and one half. Number two, denominators must be the same. Find a common multiple and then rename. Using my least common denominator, I can see that two, four, and four is my LCD. So I'm gonna change my fraction so that they both have a denominator of four. I just multiply by one for three fourths and I multiply by two for one half. What you do to the bottom, you must do to the top. I'm gonna rewrite my fractions so that I don't forget any part. So now I'm doing three fourths plus three and two fourths. Add your fractions first, three plus two is five fourths, three plus zero is three. Three and five fourths is a mixed number, is an improper fraction that we need to turn into a mixed number. So we say four can go into five one time with a remainder of one. So that becomes one and one fourth. Add our three holes to one and one fourth and we get an answer of four and one fourth. Now we're going to take four and one fourth and we're gonna add six and one third to that. So let me erase my board. Four and one fourth plus six and one third. All right, so we've already estimated up here, so we're gonna find that common denominator. Find the common multiple and then rename. Least common denominator for four and three. Four, eight, 12, three, six, nine, 12. The LCD is 12. That's gonna be our new denominator. Number three, equivalent, it's a denom swap. What you do to the bottom, you must do to the top. Three times four equals 12, one times four equals four. Four times three equals 12, one times three equals three. I'm gonna rewrite to make sure that I've gotten all my pieces. So that's four and three twelfths plus six and four twelfths. Number four, solve. Our denoms are the same. Let's add or subtract to finish this game. Three plus four is seven twelfths, and four plus six is 10. So we have an answer of 10 and seven twelfths. Number six, we check with estimation. Let's go. Our answer is close, 10 and one half is pretty close to 10 and 7 twelfths because 6 is half of 12. So that's the end of this show. The answer to number 11 is 10 and 7 twelfths.